bombs away. Guys, welcome back to the channel. We are here at Copart in Dallas, Texas, home of great barbecue and mediocre football. Still have about them cowboys. Over the next few days, I'll be visiting lots all over Texas, but we started here because this lot is full of exotics and all the other stuff we like to buy. So as we're checking these cars out, let me know in the comments if there's something you want to see us buy or if there's something you see that you might want to buy for yourself. First off, I am not 100 yards out the door and I see this thing. I mean, how can you miss it, right? Look at this. I mean, for sitting in a Copart yard, this thing is phenomenally clean. Like, really, really clean. Suspiciously clean? Maybe. It says lost type rear end, so not a flood, and there we are. Wow. That is not bad at all. Now I get it. Lamborghini parts from Lamborghini, they're expensive. But if you're on this channel, you know there's the used option available. If you can find these parts used, I think this car is going to be a ridiculously easy fix. I mean, you have the rear bumper, obviously, this panel, this grill, which is kind of flopping around. That's damaged. This is damaged. It looks like the exhaust tip is bent, but I mean, come on. None of this stuff is really hard, right guys? Now it is kind of cramped back here. It's tucked away in this pavilion, which is nice because you don't want a car like this exposed to the weather, especially with that rear window down. But even without crawling around this thing, it is just not that bad. I mean, that quarter's a little buckled, no big deal. Yes, I'm aware I may be jaded. I just had a Lamborghini quarter being buckled is not that big of a deal. But once you've seen the things I've seen, it really isn't. If you guys know me, I'm not the biggest Lambo fan. If I was using this platform, I'd prefer an R8. But if I was going to pick one and it was going to be one at salvage auction, I think this will be a really safe bet. You can see where somebody had some of this stuff unbolted, I guess, to inspect whatever's going on back there. Obviously, I'm going to go out on a limb and say this alone did not total this car. There's probably some kind of tub damage, some kind of stuff going on back there. But again, none of that stuff is a horrible fix. Otherwise, everything under there looks as it should. This shows no signs of being a messed with car, something that somebody kind of repurposed and ran through auction. It looks like a legitimate good opportunity for somebody. So I checked the website. This car is listed as run and drive. However, I hopped in, tried to power it up in the key is not here so that probably means they have it inside which is fine as a rule of thumb when i'm doing these walkthroughs unless it's something i think we have a good chance to buy or i really want to buy i'm not going to bother the guys trying to get this thing started hunting down a key getting a jump box all that stuff that is definitely going to make a fantastic project and hopefully an easy project for somebody but let's move on to see if we can find something else that's a little more wrecked a little more up our alley what is this now i did give this lot a brief look over online however i didn't see everything and I definitely did not see that. So these days it is commonplace to see Huracans, Aventadors, all that stuff at auction. These, not so much. Wow. Now I haven't looked inside of it. Let's all cross our fingers and hope it's an Ed Bolian manual special, though I doubt it. All right, keep them crossed, keep them crossed, keep them crossed. It is E-Gear. Okay, to be expected, I suppose. We all know how rare manual mercies are, but this car still looks pretty good. I'm sure the front end is not gonna look as good as the back end, however. And I would be right about that. While it's certainly much, much, much harder hit than that last Lamborghini we just looked at, it's still not horrific. Not by any means. We've seen much worse. You know, I am just going to float this idea out there. You guys don't have to listen to me, but somebody with some deep pockets should pick this thing up and uh, make a little cart out of it like we did our R8. This would certainly be no harder to do that to. It's actually not hit in the front end as bad. And the windshield isn't cracked, which as you guys know, telltale sign. The windshield's cracked. There's a lot going on under there. The fender to door gap looks right. So, I mean, it might not be that bad despite how the front end looks. I do have a feeling that with how rare these cars are these days, somebody's going to pick this thing up and return it to 100% true original spec. Once again, they have this car planted here under one of these pavilions, which is nice. Now, personally, I don't know much about Murcielagos, but the interior looks halfway decent. Obviously, the bags are blown. Obviously, that's been sat in there. Now, you guys obviously know we can't sit here and find a Mercy and not try to start it. Come on, do your thing. No juice. It had enough to show us the dash. It did not have enough to crank it whatsoever. Now with the Huracan you just saw up there, that thing's gonna pull crazy money. That's just how it is. This thing, because of how it's wrecked, 
might pull a little bit less. However, anybody who knows anything about Mercy's, anybody who's in that scene knows about this car. When there's any kind of cult following for a car, same thing goes with the NSX RX-7 Supra, all the stuff that I used to be into. When any of those come up at auction, everybody knows about it because everybody is constantly searching for those opportunities because simply they don't pop up often. So the chances of one of these cars ever slipping by for a deal is pretty low. But again, this is out of our tax bracket. So we're gonna go ahead and shut this thing back up, leave it the way it was and move on to what is sitting right next to it. Now I want you guys to let me know what stands out to you on this car because something was very, very obvious right off the bat to me. I'll go ahead and give it the full walk around first, let you guys get your comments in. Right side bad, left side actually pretty good looking. Time's up. This thing is very clearly not your Cars and Coffee 720 because look at these guys. Unfortunately, this is kind of rare these days, but it looks like somebody actually bought the 720S and used it exactly how they need to be using it. For whatever reason or another, it didn't turn out the best for them, but at least they had fun. You know that. When I'm looking at cars, I typically hate when body panels are removed like this. It's much easier to kind of piece together what happened when everything's left intact. What I'm going to assume is an AC condenser here is bent. This radiator is bent. You can see where there was some type of impact right there on that bumper beam you can kind of see where some of these brackets are loose a little bit broken but again not too bad this door has certainly seen better days it's a little cracked it's a little flimsy that thing would need to be addressed and probably replaced it's probably the best way to go about doing that as far as the front it looks fairly straight but you heard me noted on the mercy that windshield's intact that leaves me to believe that that front end's fairly straight this one however it is cracked the hood hinge itself is broken there there is a can of coconut juice in there i assume that comes with the car so empty can of coconut juice if anybody's looking great reason to buy this car so there are certainly people much more qualified than i am to comment on this but i'm sure there's something going on with the front end of this car but if you watch any automotive youtube you know people have rebuilt much much worse as far as mclarens go in fact i had the pleasure of being in one of those cars when i was down in chattanooga shout out v-tuned <laughs> If you're looking for another one, not a bad option. Now, unfortunately, these do have electronic door handles there, which means the battery's dead. We're not getting into it. So we're not gonna get to see the interior. But again, this isn't something we'd necessarily be hard up on buying. So we're not gonna worry too much about it. Let's go ahead and move on. We've been here for 30 minutes already and we've looked at a total of three cars. They definitely did that on purpose. They put all the stuff they knew I would like right here at the front so I wouldn't make it back to see this massive yard. But we're gonna keep walking. Now walking down the aisle, it almost looks like we're going to look at another Lambo. However, that is obviously not the case. We have not done a C8 yet but we're heavily in the market. We're looking, we wanna do one bad. Judging by the way this one looks, uh, this could be our first one. Now this car is listed as running on the site. However, the windows are taped up. When they do that, the battery's dead. They do a good job of sealing these cars up, so we're not gonna mess with it. If we end up bidding on this one, which we do have a bunch more to look at while we're down here. So it may not be this particular one, but I'm gonna go ahead and trust their word that this car is good and running. So we have it to reference back on later. I'm gonna do a little bit of a walk around so we know what we're getting. This thing has a little bit of rear bumper damage, not bad, that's super cosmetic. I don't think there's anything further damaged under there. Obviously this wheel, uh, that's, uh, that's not a fixer. We're gonna have to replace that one. This quarter, same deal. I suppose if you wanted to go full YouTube build mode, you could kind of regraph something over that and make it kind of shady, but we would probably go ahead and replace that if we were fixing this car personally. Now, something you could fix is probably this door. That's a much smaller, much more reasonable hole. You could probably work that and actually save this door. The front end has seen better days. It ran over something very low. Now, a lot of you guys know I have talked very poorly of cars that are wrecked in that manner. However, it's a rear engine car. I think this one, it won't matter so much. My concern when a car is hit like that is that the oil pan's wiped off, that the bottom of the engine took damage, that the subframe cracked and went through the blocks, something major like that. We don't have that to worry about on this car. I would have no hesitations buying a C8 that's hit that way. A C7, C6, probably not doing it. You can kind of see all the damage under there and you can imagine if there was an engine there, how it could very easily have got pushed up into that. As far as the side damage, this is probably the worst of it. I'm sure there's some kind of structure there that's gonna need to be addressed. And if we were buying this car, it would be for parts, not something to fix. That front suspension corner, obviously seen better days. That rocker panel's damaged. As far as this corner of the rear, it actually looks good. This wheel's in perfect shape. So at least you don't have to replace every corner on the car. We're gonna go ahead and keep it moving and we made it a whole two cars over. Here we have a really nice looking Scat Pack Charger, which is naturally aspirated. It's not a Hellcat, unfortunately, but it's nice. It's in the chalk color, one of my favorite colors on this car. Now, if you remember when we were in Houston, these cars were all over the place stolen. Nine out of 10 that we saw at Salvage Auction were stolen. They were all stolen in the same manner. I wonder if that's gonna hold up a couple hundred miles away. Ooh, 
I mean, before we do that, let's just take a minute to appreciate this color combo. Chalk exterior, red interior. If I was specking a scat pack, it would probably be this. Okay, so a couple notes. Flashback to Houston when we saw all those stolen ones. That panel was always off. This A-pillar was always off. Not the case here. Another note. This has a suede or Alcantara headliner. That is really nice. Much nicer looking than some of the other ones I've seen. Unfortunately, the car does not have a key. So we're not gonna be able to start this one either. I suppose there's not much else to see here. Could be a flood, could be a theft, who knows? The car is completely undamaged. It looks like it rolled off a dealer lot and came straight here. So if somebody's looking for a project, though I'm sure it's gonna be pricey, here you go. And it does have some kind of exhaust. Let's see if we can see what it is. It is too tight against the bumper, I think 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 is the key word there that's a corsa it looks like the bottom half of the logo no nope, there is a c but i was wrong it's not a corsa it looks like it says carvin okay maybe tips i'll have to look that up later i am not familiar with that and the trend continues we are stopping at every other car a lot of you guys already know this, but I am a newfound Porsche lover. I recently bought a manual 997 Turbo that was dirt cheap and full of issues. And while we are not even close to having it fully back on the road, it has certainly ignited my love for Porsche. So when I see things like this, I actually get excited now where maybe before, I would have passed this thing over. Obviously, you can see it's a Boxster. Personally, I am more of a fan of the Cayman, which is why you're going to see one on the channel very, very soon. But if you are looking for a Boxster to fix, this is probably a really solid option. You can see most of the car is completely undamaged. It's only once we get back here to the rear, specifically the left-hand driver side here, that you actually start seeing some damage. Obviously, I think that suspension is going to need just a little bit of work, but again, not too bad. You can kind of get one of those whole corners and replace that whole deal, so you don't have to worry about anything being bent, left over, repaired, anything. Now, this is why this car was totaled. You can see on the rear tub right there, it's bashed in. However, it's not that bad of a fix if you know what you're doing. Even if you don't know what you're doing, it's not that bad of a fix. And trust me on that, because I'm about to do something similar to a Cayman, and I don't have a clue what I'm doing. Now being that this is a newer car, let's see if this thing has enough battery power to start it. Well, it starts right up. Didn't give us any trouble. We do have a tail light code. I couldn't imagine why. Other than the fact that this car has a little bit of exhaust damage, it has a little bit of a leak, which, go figure, the car sounds really healthy. Runs great, looks great. I say this is another great one for somebody to fix. If this is any kind of indication what type of video this is, we're going to pass this C7 because honestly, compared to some of the other cars here, it's kind of run of the mill and move down here to this Hellcat. Now this one's certainly not a theft car. We know why this one's here because we just got a glimpse of the front end. And yep, that will do it. Now the question on this one, when a car's hit like this in the radiator, what stopped it? That's all it boils down to. Did the engine stop it or did something stop it before it got into the engine? Uh, unfortunately, they did wire this one shut, so we're not going to be able to look under there. However, we're going to go ahead and look back at the pictures on the site and see if we can tell anything from that. Now in the salvage parts business, we see so many Hellcats we can't buy because they're either stolen, floods, something like that, or you don't know why they're there. This one, we definitely could buy. This is something that is right up our alley. Obviously for good reason, these bags are blown. However, otherwise the interior is pretty solid. This crash bar did leave some indents there on the seats. However, you leave that sit out in the sun, you'll be good. We'll go ahead and turn that so it's less of a pointy surface on it. The only thing missing for this to be a really, really, really top notch car is a wide body package. And if we're looking just under this crack in the hood, it kind of looks like that radiator may have stopped short of the engine. Again, no power. I just wanted to check mileage, though we can just do that later on the Copart website. I wasn't going to start this car, being that there's questions about if something's into the front end. The last thing we want to do while we're here at a lot is further damage a car. I want to take one second to apologize for the wind noise. When I'm in Texas, it's blowing 20 miles an hour. There's no changing it. It's been that way every time. I'm doing the best I can to kind of minimize it in the video, but if you hear some, sorry. And just as I finish apologizing for the Texas weather, we run into this gym. Base model Corvette. It is a... Let's see what year it is. That'll tell us what engine is in it. Ooh, a 2012. Did not expect that. It's really rare to see a 12 and up base model. We don't see those very often at auction. And the reason that's a big deal are the seats. Unfortunately, this car is dead battery electronic door handle. So I don't know if you guys can see that in there. These seats are significantly different from the earlier seats being that they have shoulder bolsters. And again, don't know if you can see it. One other little gem that I noticed on this car. I think that is a Home Depot racing short shifter. I've been doing this for a very long time and still there's something new every time I come out to one of these lots. Unfortunately, with the interior lock, the battery dead and the hood shut, there's not much where else we're going to be able to see on this. We'll have to refer back to Copart, but I will leave you guys with that gym right there. We did just happen upon this F80 M3, which correct me if I'm wrong, guys, I believe is a competition package due to the wheels. Very sweet color. I'm going to go out on a limb and say somebody is fixing this car because this thing is actually really nice.
It has blue interior, which is beautiful. I don't know what that is. So obviously this is some kind of special package. I don't know what the deal is with that. We just found a gym. No, not this EG Civic, this Daytona Hellcat. Now I'm not super familiar with the Daytonas. We haven't bought one yet, but I'm gonna go out on a limb and say they only made 501 of them. Just a guess, could be wrong. This thing, as far as Hellcats go, is just so good. So good. Wide body, blue brakes, good wheels. This is a really, really nice car, and somebody's definitely gonna fix this. There is pretty much a 0% chance we get our hands on this from a parts standpoint. But if you're looking to fix one and you want a rare car, I would highly recommend checking this one out, especially considering that damage looks like it's above that frame rail. And while I'm not going to dig too, too heavily into it, because again, we have 0% chance of being able to afford this and buy it and make money on it from a parts standpoint, I kind of think this is a diamond in the rough that unless you came here and looked at it in person, you might not know how easy of a fix this is. Let's go ahead and pop the hood. I'm going to go out on a limb and say the interior is phenomenal on this car as well. Oh, super dope. Oh, that is super cool. Man, Dallas, you guys are really on it with your Hellcat interiors. Pretty much everything I saw at Houston was like base or just regular leather. You guys are doing it right down here. Ooh, I don't know if that popped. That might be jammed shut. Yeah, unfortunately, our latch is jammed shut. However, judging by the wreck, it is pretty obvious this thing does not have any engine damage. So let's go ahead and see if it has battery power. As I slither in past the airbags. Oh, suede steering wheel, beautiful. Every bag in this car is blown, but still, I think it's a pretty good deal for somebody. And most importantly, we got the red key in it, which means this guy was having fun when he wrecked it. Let's go ahead and see if this thing actually has power. Oh, oh. Twenty-seven thousand miles starts right up. Didn't give me any bit of hesitation. Full battery power. This thing has to have not been here that long. I'm gonna go out on a limb and say this is probably the nicest Mopar I've ever been in. What a car! This is almost enough to make me want to fix one of these things. Now these are cars we would not typically buy whatsoever, but with the popularity of resto modding now, with the popularity of putting modern drivetrains in classic cars, I would bet that it's not too long before you see something along these lines come through the shop because it has a smoking drivetrain in it. It does have a tire in there. We're not gonna get into this car because again, it's sealed shut. We're not gonna make a big deal out of something we're most likely not buying, but let's see if we can see what kind of engine's in it. Well, it's certainly not an LS. And let's all collectively cross our fingers, though I don't think it's gonna work. Hope this thing has a Coyote or something in it. Well, even if it doesn't have a Coyote, it certainly has a fantastic bass boat paint job. That uh, sure is something. Let's go ahead and get this popped and it is something old. And if you thought I knew nothing about old Corvettes, I know even less about old Mustangs. It has headers, it has an Edelbrock carb, which is like speaking another language to me. So let me know what you guys think about this car. Well, it might be hit hard. It might look like junk from this angle, which happens to be the only angle you can see. But there's no mistake in this. I love when all the panels are on like this, like I said earlier, because you can tell exactly what happened. He hit a tree, he hit a pole. There's literally nothing else that could have caused that. Now, unfortunately, it did clip this wheel, and that may be a slight understatement, but you get my point. When this wheel had a surprise meeting with that pole, it definitely made short work of this carbon ceramic. That's probably about $1,000 of brake rotor sitting right there rattling around in this wheel. Fortunately, maybe the caliper's still good. And if we were to buy this, you would have three good carbon ceramic rotors. Don't get me wrong, they do hold value as replacements for somebody, but the main driver of value in carbon ceramics in this is selling the complete kit to somebody to put on their car that does not have it from the factory. And, uh, oh wow, I lied to you. Um, so this is not that bad of a wheel hit. I am absolutely shocked to see this carbon ceramic blown off there as well. In fact, this one is completely missing, as is the rear parking brake. Now over here on the passenger side, this is what it's actually supposed to look like. The full carbon rotor, the parking brake, and the main brake caliper up there. It is hit so bad up there that the firewall and the frame is pushed in. Let's see if we can open this. I don't know if it's actually going to. It did. So you can see up there, it is really, really jacked up, even though it might not come across well on camera. But the good thing for the insurance companies, the good thing for Copart, is this thing still has a ton of money in it in parts value. In fact, these are the ones that guys like me and other salvage yards love to buy because we don't have to be bidding against rebuilders, which always drives the price up. Those guys are the absolute worst. I doubt this one starts up, but I'm not going to hesitate to try. And as expected, absolutely nothing. So these do have a fusible link down there. When a car gets hit very hard, typically when the bags blow, which isn't the case here, that fuse blows, cuts all power to the car. So it is very common to see these things at auction, not running. That's about all we have to look at here. Let's keep rolling.
And as I say, keep rolling, I guess we'll give this thing an honorable mention. This 392 Trackhawk, I believe it would be. Oh no, I lied to you. This is a Durango. So it's the 392 Durango, which I remember when these things first got announced, people were going crazy. Now, unfortunately, on the special meter, this one's pretty low because this thing uh, had to be on its lid. It absolutely had to be. Wow, look at the windshield. So the windshield's caved in, the roof is caved in. It's all jacked up up here. I don't know if we're gonna be able to pop the hood. No, and we're certainly not getting inside that thing to try because it's all sealed up. Um, so I don't know what somebody would use this for other than parts. I suppose a really ambitious YouTube rebuilder could probably take it on though. Is it really worth it? Now again, not our cup of tea, but I can't come out to a lot like this and not look at a rolls. So some of you guys are gonna roast me in the comments, but I don't know if this is a ghost, a phantom, whatever they are. I guess when you're Rolls Royce, you don't have to put the name of the car on the back because the people who can afford it know what they're buying, and I suppose they don't care if everybody else knows what model it is. Now, as somebody who is used to seeing nice cars with nice brake setups, it's kind of odd to see a car like this with a floating caliper like that, being that it's, what, $250,000, $300,000 car? But I suppose that is not the point of a car like this, and they did get the front right for what it's worth. I always put these in the same class with Bentley, cars that I can't afford and probably wouldn't buy even if I could afford it, but I have to say, this does look a little better than the Bentleys. You know, if you force me at gunpoint to drive one, it's probably gonna be this. And I suppose, let's see if she has power. Oh, okay, wow. Everything's popping out at us. Well, it has power, so uh, yeah, we're gonna go ahead and start it. So the car's yelling at me quite a bit. Fortunately, nothing that is related to it running, so we don't have any fears about that. It's probably the quietest supercar, if you can call it that, I've ever heard. Um, I suppose that's what Rolls owners want. You know, I don't think those guys are the ones putting muffler deletes on their car. I think this is supposed to pop up. I don't know how to get it to pop up. I kind of want to see it, but I guess I'm not gonna. Somebody in the comments, let me know how you get that thing to pop up so next time I run across one of these cars, I can check it out. I suppose we'll go ahead and pop the hood just because, you know, it'd be a shame not to see this beauty. V12. Not my cup of tea, but you're going to be hard pressed to find anybody that says this isn't a fantastic piece of engineering. We've heard enough of this. Let's go see if we can find something that's more up our alley again. Now I'm headed over to view a couple more cars that I am actually very interested in buying before we wrap this up. And I did happen to notice this. This is just an example of some of the things you see in a salvage yard. Now, how does that get there? An SRT wheel broken in the back of this F-150. Honestly, with all the batteries in this thing, somebody may have been scrapping out of this and that's how it got there. That, well, we're 10 feet away from that truck, haven't made it to the aisle that I need to go to, and I got distracted once again. It is for the best kind of reason. And uh, honestly, guys, I am kind of hurt because this is an Inferno Orange Grand Sport. My favorite color Corvette, and honestly, Grand Sports are kind of the best deal going right now given the prices of ZR1s and Z06s. So there are very few cars that it hurts me to see in a salvage yard. This is one of them. But with that said, there is a very good chance that we end up buying this car. Honestly, as we get around to the back of it, that is really, really funny. The insurance adjuster wrote up this sticker. That is the first time I have ever seen that, and I have seen a lot. What that tells me is they were probably really stretching to get this car totaled. This rear quarter has some damage though, very easily fixable. Honestly, it kind of looks like it's a crack there and some of the tabs are broken back there. If you know what those are, you know this car had eagle eyes. Those are not here any longer. The car does still have the stock exhaust. So looking through this, it is very easy to see that this car does not have a ton of damage. Honestly, from what I can tell, the tub isn't even damaged. And when you're trying to total anything except a base model C6 just on body panels, you kind of really have to count on this being damaged if you want to get it totaled. If that tub isn't damaged, it's hard to total from rear and body panels only. Now you guys did just see us rebuild that one base model that was total for barely any damage. However, base model compared to Grand Sport, these cars are worth a lot more money. And with that, it's a lot harder to total them. This is where I get mixed feelings on this car. This video is going to come out before this car runs at auctions. All you guys are going to know how minimal the damage is. But I want to buy this car. So do I be the good guy and put this in the video or do I keep it all to myself? Who knows? <laughs> I guess you guys will know. If you're watching this in the video, well, it turns out I was feeling generous because maybe I turned you on to a very good fixer. Now, I'm just going to have to ask you guys to do me a solid and not bid against me so I can win the thing cheap and rebuild it on the channel. I mean, if we're being honest, it is only right that someone like me owns this car because I would do the exact same thing to these tires. I love this guy. Perfect car, perfect color choice, great wheels, great use of the rear tires. Once again, this is taped up, so I'm not going to get in there and look at it, even though I probably should. 
but the car is manual. Being that it's a manual, that means there is a dry sump tank right under there. This side's not damaged. We don't have to worry about there being a loss of oil in this car. Honestly, as far as C6s go, this is probably as safe as bet as you can make. Now, being that I'm looking this car over very well because, well, I want it, the car does have some damage in there under the front bumper. I don't know the extent. I can't really get under there and look at it too well, but there is a little bit going on in the front end as well. So basically what that means is you guys should just leave it alone. Once you get the number slash ladder system they have going on at these lots, it becomes very easy to navigate. That means our next car is gonna be somewhere up here. I have not seen it yet, so I'm taking you guys along with me. We're gonna hunt for it together. No, this isn't YouTube games. I actually have not seen it. No, it is not that Challenger. It looks like they did move some cars out of here, so I suppose it could have been moved. Hopefully we can find it here. Oh, I think I see it right up there. We have a beautiful, though some would say slightly busted, 2020 911. As you guys know, I prefer the 997s. They're the best Porsche ever made, don't at me. But these things are so good looking. There's something about that rear end. There's something about the rear quarter. The What's the term the kids use? Porsche got me tripping. I should probably have a tetanus shot. Anyway, back to it. This thing just looks so good. The way the rear quarter flares out just, ugh. But I'm getting myself excited. Let's move on and see what's actually wrong with it. So the secondary damage, obviously, is the rear end here. But we're not going to dive too much into that because this is a much bigger issue up here. Now it is tied shut, but I think we can use our imagination. This thing is absolutely walloped. Now if you're going to fix a car like this, it's probably best to go with a whole new front cut. This thing is just really, really hit. You can tell the whole front end is bent up based on the fact that the panel gap on the bottom of the fender is about two inches. And up here it is, I don't know, negative half an inch. Typical Porsche quality. Oh wait, hold on. Sorry guys, some of you guys might not understand this, but if you've watched my Porsche videos, you know I can't say it in two syllables. We're going with Porsche, that's how we say it on this channel. Looking at this 2020, just caught myself saying Porsche, which, don't like it, it's weird, it's too fancy. Anyway, back to it, interior is beautiful, and uh, that side's not taped shut, so let's go ahead and see if it uh, at least powers up, though I doubt this thing's gonna start. So it didn't say it on the back, but that clears it up. It is a Carrera S, so I don't really know what the difference is. I haven't looked at too many of these newer cars. Let's see what she does. And the answer to that is absolutely nothing. So unfortunately, we are not going to get to hear this thing. But you can use your imagination, make Porsche sounds, look it up on YouTube, play that video in the background, do whatever you want for the full Porsche experience. I guess that's enough of this one. Let's uh, move on. We only have a couple more cars to look at here. I got to talk to somebody about this. Porsche doing bad things to me. My life's really went downhill since I became a Porsche owner. And while I'm walking along upgrading my health insurance, I ran into this gym. I mean, this is also whacked pretty hard. Another car we've yet to buy, but we're in the market for one of these. We're gonna have one of these sooner than later, I guarantee it. Carbon mirrors, great option. This car definitely has no power because the window was stuck down, but just to confirm, yeah. Beautiful car, honestly a beautiful color black. I'm not a big black fan, though I just bought a $50,000 black 911, but I've had to pick a color. It'd be one like this, it looks great. Rear quarter damage, front damage, decently hard wreck, but still somebody could fix this thing. Maybe it's not destined to end up in the parts yard. Now, right next to it, I don't know anything about this. XTS4 V, is it supercharged, is it turbo, what? I have no idea. Honestly, until I just saw the V badge, didn't know that this existed. We're not gonna get in there because that smells like somebody smoked a pack of cigarettes in it five minutes ago. And unfortunately the hood is also tied shut. So I don't think we're gonna have our answer on that. So again, if you know what the deal with that is, save me the two seconds of Googling, let me know in the comments. Moving along, we've came across my favorite badge. Yes, that's it, LSX. Nobody cares about the V, nobody cares about the M. LSX is where it's at. That's the badge we wanna see. Now I'm gonna hope this guy does it justice. This thing better have something wild under the hood. And it looks like a stock L99. So. A little bit disappointing. It is also missing an exhaust, so uh, I don't know that we'll be purchasing that one. And honestly, guys, I wouldn't blame you if you thought this was set up, but I keep running into stuff that's just oddball in the back of trucks. No, I'm not playing games. No, I didn't set this up. This is a Nissan Frontier that happens to be next to this thing, and it has some kind of Shelby lip in it. New GT500, maybe? I honestly don't know. This uh, kind of interesting. I honestly do not know why this keeps happening, but uh, it does make for good video, I suppose. Anyway, moving on, we have one more car to find. 
And we're gonna do the same thing with this last car. We're just gonna run along until we find it. Another car I don't know anything about. I just wanna check it out based on the MSRP because I know a lot of you guys like the AMG stuff. I personally don't know anything and don't really care to know anything. But I do wanna see this because it looks like it's a very expensive car. Oh, uh, okay. I suppose we'll, uh, we'll check out this guy first. All right. That is uh, one crispy LS2. Needless to say, you will not see this coming through our shop. Um, it is a automatic. So we can't even count on it having some good transmission and rear end to make up for that value. Honestly, this thing is probably worth about its weight in scrap, which isn't much considering it's fiberglass. Obviously, I say that facetiously because, yes, there is still value in it. We're just not buying it. And here we are. Once again, I'm going to ask you guys to tell me what you know about this thing because, like I just said five times, don't know anything about it. But judging by the listing, this car is not a cheap car. It is an AMG Mercedes-Benz GT43. I guess it's a Panamera competitor, but honestly, it's kind of a little better looking, even though I hate to say that. The interior is just phenomenally good wow wow those seats these are uh even with that bumper sitting there which doesn't look like it did anything major uh it's not tearing into it or anything it's just kind of resting there and no sharp edges will remain down on it we'll make sure of that there we go i have recently saw a couple of our dealer friends specifically chicago motor cars shout out eric shout out hassan have been preaching how good the interiors are on these new mercedes and uh i think it holds up i don't think they were lying now do we have power that's the question we do not unfortunately which is a shame i'd love to see that dash display look how big that is Well, I don't really know what I'm looking at here. So again, let me know in the comments. Um, this thing is just so nice looking though. And honestly, the hit doesn't look that bad. It really doesn't. I am surely not the most qualified person to be preaching on this, but these front rails look pretty straight. It's dented down there. The lower, not too bad. This side over here, that front extension is missing and it does have some assurance markings right there on that frame rail, but uh, from the naked eye, which doesn't mean much, doesn't look that bad. It really does not. Now this car 10 times out of 10 is going to be fixed by somebody. This will not end up in a parts yard. It won't end up in my parts yard regardless. And maybe it's not in the budget for any of you either, but if it is, definitely let me know if you buy this thing because I would love to see the finished product. And uh, maybe if you're around the area, you can uh, come take me for a ride, show me what these things are all about. I had a ton of fun doing this, I always do. I hope you guys had just as much fun watching. If you guys want to see more of it, if you're digging it, make sure you let me know in the comments. Make sure you subscribe, share, like, all that good stuff. I said it once, I'll say it again. I appreciate that so much every single time. We have so much cool stuff going on at the shop and on the channel this summer. Some of which you guys know, some of which you do not. So I hope you guys are ready for it. I hope you guys are excited for it. And as always, I will see you guys next time.